people to register to vote early. Um, several people have been down there and they let me know that there's can't have access. Okay. Uh, there's nobody there. No, no, no. Which I usually don't do. Uh -huh. We don't respond. We don't respond to public comments. Okay. But you can continue when I finish. Okay. County manager has not opened this building to the public. And if someone wants to register, they can call up here and someone will register them. But nobody, someone, you see, I have to be a little. Mr. Sproul had to let me in the building. I called him and let him know I need to come to the building. So that's the procedure that we have to follow. If you could spread that word, we would appreciate it. Okay, I certainly will. May I say something, Madam Chair? Sure, she hasn't finished her public comments, though, so, so don't forget your public comments. Okay, go ahead, Ms. Jordan. Uh, Ms. Jordan, uh, there's a sheriff down front in the uh, in the county building, administrative building. Yes. And, and he has been directed, manager, as to what to do if somebody was to come to any office that's closed in the building. And that is for him to direct them to call up to the office and someone will come down to assist. And uh, uh, accordingly, we haven't missed any calls that I can recall. If we did, I, I, if we did from, uh, from my office perspective, we certainly want to register everybody that can come and want to register. We want to do that. Okay. All right. I will let that person... This person, no. <laughs> and put it on your sheet. And you, you will continue to do uh, comments, please. Yes. And then there's um concern um with the absentee um ballot um commission and so forth. You know, some things have been changed. Um, so you have to have more than one witness and a notary or something like that. So, because I've never used it, I've only done the early voting. So, if that could be clarified this evening, I would appreciate that. Um, I've been on other calls, people did discuss it, but I wanted to hear it from you on uh, my board election here in Edgecombe County. And also, do you all know yet how many um, early voting sites you will have? Yeah. Um, that concludes my question. Thank you. Thank you so much for calling. Please don't mind the book. Please stay for the rest of the meeting. Oh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Mr. Um, you have the meeting. 
Social Services at 301 South Fairview Road in the Pines Chapel Missionary Baptist Church Fellowship Hall in Pine Top. Um, all sites are going to be open the exact same hours, and those hours are set by the state law at 8 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. weekdays starting on October the 15th, one through October the 31st. Uh, all sites will be open Saturday, October 17th, and October 24th from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. And the last Saturday from uh, on October 31st from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Those hours are set by state law. They've been making it uh, differential changes. The only thing that this board elected to do was uh, we were required to have 10 hours on the weekends. And if we all recall, we all voted to have to 10 hours each Saturday when we get the, the, the requirements of the 10 hours. So that's what we did in retrospect. Mm -hmm. okay. um, uh, the notice that I have here, everybody can see that. But what, what, what that is, is uh, it's uh, the dates of the absentee meetings. Um, I got Tuesday, September the 29th at 5 p.m. as if, if necessary, and I can guarantee you that it probably will be necessary. The reason being because uh, we have right now somewhere around 500 absentee requests that have come in. And um, so that's where we got uh, yeah, and the state changed the meetings from uh, the four meetings to the six meetings. So um, we would normally start the 13th of Tuesday, October 13th, which would be two days prior to the vote, if y'all remember. But they added two additional uh, mm -hmm. meeting dates. And uh, I'm not so sure that we won't have to make some additional changes on that down the road. If we do, we will have to notice it. And when I say additional changes, if you were in on the 6th of October, and I'm just using it as an example, we find that we have more than we can handle, then we have to come back and set up another meeting day for that Thursday, or whatever day we take to obtain what we need to get done. Okay? Um, the early uh, uh, absentee by mail was be scheduled to start going out September 4th, and that's the state law. Uh, and uh, all of that is provided that we got our ballots. And um, we will still have our ballots by September 4th. We'll be working on the hold up for the ballots for proofing was to get the names of the uh, presidents on the ballot and the president candidates. And so they did get that up there. And so now we are proofing the ballot now to uh, get it to print. And we should not uh, have any problem with that. We've been directed to have, uh, to order 100% in ballots. Uh, and in this particular case, we're probably going to order more than 100%. But the simple fact is that the number of attitude requests that are going out, um, and, and, and a lot of times the, the citizen may not be absolutely sure what they're doing with the absentee request. I'm just being uh, based on the information I know because they're, they're getting bombarded with absentee requests in the mail and they're not coming from us. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. No, go ahead on. But 
that's what I wanted to say that um, and we can't stop that but we need to make sure that this misinformation or confusion is dealt with so that people will know if it does not say it's compelling for the election or North Carolina State Board of Elections it's not valid it's not valid anyway that's right however the ones that they've been getting in the mail were valid mm -hmm. they didn't have no they didn't have edge from count on it now we just recently were able to they reformatted ours and got our name now so the name is on the abstract request the edge from county and our post office boxes on there the ones that they were being sent out by other organizations um they had um, envelopes that had our address on it along with a self-addressed stamp envelope to send back which is just something that we don't do okay all right <clears throat> so in that respect we're getting a lot of those that are coming in we're getting some uh with, with other candidates names on it as well i believe we've been some with the president name on it that's right. And uh, it's tripod with one were coming in that had this picture, they tear it open, and it had a legal absentee request form in there. And they could fill that out and send it in. And uh, But we can't just arbitrarily send out one. It has to be requested from my office in order for us to send it out. Okay? I believe that while we're talking, do I need to respond about the absentee ballot? Yeah. It, it, yeah. Yeah. It, uh, Miss Jordan, can you hear me okay? Okay. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. The the absentee request uh, form that is being sent out and the envelope has not been sent to us as of yet. They are being formatted now. But the new okay. information that we have received okay. is, the new information that we're receiving is is that it's only going to require one witness uh, and it does not have to be notarized. The prior ones that we used to use had two witnesses and you couldn't have two witnesses then it had to be notarized. So only one witness and it does not have to be notarized. And that is the information that we're getting and we do not have the absentee envelope in our hand. We just finished getting legalities put together at the State Board of Elections and when they get it, they get it to us. We send it to the printer, and the printer then, in return, send us a, a copy of the absentee ballot so that we'll know what we're dealing with in that respect. So okay, I so that, I, I hope that answers your question. If not, yes. And can one of the people be a spouse? You sure can. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And uh, we'll be getting more information out on that at, when we get all our information, you know. We will be disseminating that out when we get more information in retrospect. Okay. Let me ask you one more, ask one more question because it just came to my mind. Appreciate y'all listening to allow me to ask this question. Uh, will there be a, a uh, ballot drop off box on site? You talking about the absentee ballot? Yeah, some places got ballots drop off box. Some people right now are very fearful putting their um, ballot in the mail. Mm -hmm. So they want to, you know, another question is, would there be a box strictly for the ballots? This is not site. to respond. If you make your, you know, no, 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 the third is election day. Then you make your request in plenty of time so that you can receive the ballot and return. And the legality of it is is that the only person that can request an absentee request form for anyone other than themselves is a relative. And also right. the only person that can return that ballot is a relative. Right. If there was a, such of a drop-off box, then you don't know who is dropping it off. So we're not allowed by our executive director on Monday mm -hmm. with the declaration that we're not going to have drop-off box for the absentee request. It has to be in the mail or in this office. If somebody brings it in this office, we will have them sign a form uh, in retrospect to them dropping it off. Oh, okay. Well, that, that's an option. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. The, the, uh, this notice information also, I got up there uh, 
that you know for us election day is november the third mm -hmm. um and then we're going to have to have another meeting on the sixth to approve any absentees uh supplements that have come in and possibly our provisions and when i say possibly that depends on the number that we would have and then also there will be another date uh on the 12th of november that we would uh, have the final Yukavo absentee ballots to be approved, okay? We'll get you a more, a more schedule on that as well, okay? Mm -hmm. um, me. Yes, ma'am. You said that would be on November 12th? Yes. Plus, on the 13th? Well, November 13th is Candace meeting, yes, ma'am. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the, the, third, the 12th meeting is a uh, asterisk meeting. If necessary. Okay. Yes, At what time would that be? Five yes. Okay. Uh, that would be the sign that we need to get. So again, I'm going to update that information okay. to y'all as okay. we go. Okay. All right. Um, I don't know if anyone else saw it, but I don't know if I ever read this, but I'm trying to keep up because everything is changing so fast. In the world. Um, people that are in nursing homes and um, those type of facilities, excuse me, people working in those places can now assist patients. Um, I haven't. Yeah, because I, I, I did a screenshot. Uh -huh. Okay. I did a screenshot of everything that, that's dealing with um that I read dealing with gotcha. election. Right. Because sometimes it hits the newspaper before they get it to you. That is true. Mm -hmm. But but if the law changes, it goes to our state board before mm -hmm. it, okay, and the, the information that we have. You don't know, have the information that we have is that an employer cannot assist in completing an absentee ballot. That's the information that we're having. An employer. No. I'm saying the information that we have. That's having. right. That's correct. Yes, ma'am. So, so they they have they're still working on the matching. Mm -hmm. that, that can work. Yes, they can go in, uh, and assist. They haven't verified or worked out the legalities of how you're going to do that yet because they are saying that they might allow people to uh, to to go to the outside of the the agency because the relatives can't even go in. Yeah. I know that's, that's why I got my caught my eye. Uh-huh. So, so if relatives can't go in, I really don't know how our MAT team is going to be able to go in. That's why I think that they are allowing the employees Okay, and, 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 and we haven't got to that point yet that I know, but okay. but I do know that the uh, the Health and Human Services are still working on guidance um, uh, from the Board of Election, and I got some additional information here uh, and I was going to look over and kind of pass that on to y'all. And of course, you know, in terms of compliance, we're going to do everything that we can do. <coughs> I noticed another source of information the uh, State Board of Election Institute is in Karen Branson and put up quite a few uh, videos on the to the instructions for the for the election. Yes, sir. We got it. Yeah. Okay. Right. We get we have a, a Monday morning meeting with her every Monday morning. Uh, okay. Uh, 30 mm -hmm. and then every other Wednesday we have what they call the huddle where we're getting additional information as well. Mm -hmm. so, is that broadcast? No. Is that broadcast? No, right? because what they asked to do because of so many employees, they're asking that only employees did that and so because it's like a call in and etc. So they're really not allowing everybody to get on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was asking if, 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 if it's, no, it's not if it's filmed, if it's videos, then it can be transferred to Facebook. Yeah. Like she's doing now. Right, gotcha. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I just, I just check back to the Facebook page every now and then. Okay, gotcha. You, you okay? Okay, 
Okay. Um, as um, Dr. Armstrong said, as you know, so much is changing almost daily in reference to COVID uh, in terms of how we are to do certain things. And uh, so I'm trying to forward y'all the emails that they're coming in so that y'all can kind of read them along with me because it's going to take all of us working together trying to right. us to work through this process. Um, we do know that uh, right now what I have been doing is trying to make sure that we got uh, polling locations um, uh, because it's not automatic as it has been in the past. Um, right now, we're still waiting for uh, a, a direction from the schools, these five schools. Mm. Uh, there are some other locations that we're waiting for. Yeah, there are some other locations that we're waiting for. I got confirmation on one today that we were not 100% sure that we were going to be able to use. They called back and said they were going to do so. Um, and there are still two or three more right now that's in limbo. Back in and I, you know, I don't want to share that information until I know what we're dealing with. Okay. If when I get a final that we can or can't, then I share it. Because otherwise, no need for me to expose anybody when they are thinking about how they're going to work this process out. Okay? All right. So I do have a couple of memos that I would like to cover with us, if y'all will. Um, this is, this one is dated number 202018. I'm, I'm not sure y'all may or may not have this one. Mm -hmm. this, I did forward it to you. you know. But I, I was going to oh, forward it as an email. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And and uh, it came from the Department of Health and Human Services. Okay. And, uh, and the guidance was issued on August, August the 13th. And they talked about guidelines for voting locations in a scenario in which many people gather and they give us the social distancing things that we need to try to do. Uh, the guidance and cover social distancing, minimize exposure, cloth face coverings, cleaning and hygiene, monitoring of symptoms, just a whole array of things that we need to do uh, and we're going to have to work through, okay? Uh, as we get our poll workers together to do the same. Now, um, normally we would start the process of getting our poll location somewhere around September. So I have started that process simply because there are, there are some differences of things that are going on. The same thing about poll workers. Because they were signed up the year before last and they worked in March, that mean that they're necessarily going to work in November. So we're going through that process as well. And uh, so, um, of course, you know, the state had got a portal where they're trying to uh, assist uh, us with uh, poll workers. And when I say us, I'm talking about all 100 counties. Um, and if somebody calls in through that portal, they're giving us the name, and we're getting a couple of names from that. Uh, we're getting a couple of other names from the local people, and we're working through it. As I told y'all earlier, out of the 21 chief judges uh, that we had in March, uh, we only had two to say they could not work or would not work. Uh, so we're working on that process as we go. Of course. Yes, I know prior to any election, we do train me for the uh, whole we do training for the poll workers, regardless of whether they are new or better. Mm -hmm. So, um, how are we going to handle the training with the social distancing and the number of people that can be in the meeting? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, so, how many meetings do we need to have? We will have several meetings. Okay. We're going to start with our uh, one-stop workers. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have uh, a group of those, and we'll bring them in uh, downstairs in the auditorium, 
uh, and we're going to just have several meetings in retrospect uh, until we can get everybody straight with that. And a lot of the early one stop workers will be judges and chief judges. So they would have training. And the way the, the, the system is working, um, there will be no time to bring those poll workers for one stop to come in and train them any additional time. Because if we start on the 15th of October, and they'll be working from 8 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. and work three Saturdays, <laughs> there'll be no time. So we're gonna do what we gotta do. Okay? Just like we always have that. That's right. Okay. But I was concerned That's about the number of people that can be in we we now we won't be able to bring in a lot of people at the same time. We're gonna have to bring them in periodically. What I'm thinking, and this is a process, and I, we got October 15th. We're working through that process as we go now. I think my, my first thing is to get the people. Then we can tell them how they can work. But we're gonna bring in maybe a one stop site from Tarboro, a one stop site from Pine Top, and a one stop site from Rocky Mount. That should get us about ten people each poll, each precinct. We'll start with that. That will give us 30 people. And out of that 30 people, that will be uh, about uh, a third, almost a half of our poll workers because we got 63 judges. So that'll kind of help us out with that factor. And then those that are not working, then we'll start bringing them in. And then we're going to have to bring them in during the time that we're having one stop. You know, it's, it's, that's the process that we're dealing with. So. And then when the changes come, because you know there'll be more changes, and there'll be more changes, and there'll be more changes. And as the changes come in, then we have to go back, uh, even in March, and you, you know, you, you know they, they would work one day, and at night, they'll make a change, and then I gotta get that to the person the next morning. So we're, we're used to that, we do what we gotta do. But that's a good question, a good thought, and uh, we, we, we do what we gotta do. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, they're, um, they are, again, they're still trying to finalize how they're going to handle the MAT team and the legalities of working with those institutes. We've only had one call so far. And uh, so uh, as soon as I get my information, then I pass that on to them. Okay. Mm -hmm. I did print out the final approval of the uh, one-stop sites. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. 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 Y'all remember when we approved it, we approved that with the intent that we were going to make the necessary change that we did make it. So that's how we got the approval done. Y'all remember that? Yeah. All right. <laughs> it was, I think that was really smart of y'all to do that too. That's what worked out. The, um, the COVID money, the CARE Act money that we have, uh, we have agreed to let the state handle the, the money and we send them receipts because they're going to handle all the accounting of that money, the CARE Act money. All the CARE Act money that we receive has to be spent by December 31, or it goes back to the federal government. Have a money a little different. We got until June the 30th to spend the remainder of the have a money that we're gonna have. And of course, y'all know there was 93,000 for one and 10,000 for another. So we should uh, uh, be able to, no problem spend that money because we got a lot that we can spend it on. We do know that, uh, I guess, since we've been together, uh, we got information that all the hand sanitizer that we would need for the state is going to be furnished by an, uh, uh, an individual company that we will not have to pay for. We ordered it, and we ordered somewhere around 88 gallons of hand sanitizer along with 100, 365 eight ounce bottles. So we should have ample enough of that uh, to distribute. 
when we start the training, we're going to have to train uh, our poll workers to, of what they need to do to clean uh, periodically during the day. What's going to happen because even the clipboards, it goes out to the, uh, uh, the, the curbside. Thank you for that. Uh, they, they're going to have to be sanitized after each use. We got several of those, and we ought to be able to share and share those alike. Um, they don't have to be touched uh, anymore. The ballot doesn't have to be touched because if y'all remember, it has a feed that go into the, the voting machine, the DS200. The M100 was a little easier, but the DS200, you can feed it right in as well. It can go right in and retrospect. Um, I, we are going to plan on having a monitor for each one-stop site. Uh, like uh, like a, a, a manager that will manage the process of the, the flow, um, and, and 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 that won't take away from the ch the judges that are there working. Uh, somebody's gonna have to be in charge of monitoring that, and then somebody will have to be in charge of, of a direct cleaning and things of that nature. So all of that is a process that we're working. On. Okay. So, once the polls close, that will probably be a deep clean in the evening. And to what um, you talking the about early voting? Mm -hmm. we, we will clean again in the evening. Yes, yes, uh, we will clean in the evening and pray that we have no breakouts. If we had a breakout, and yeah. God forbid, if we had a breakout, then you, that's probably going to be closed now. And site, and that's what uh, we've been hearing. And that site would have to be closed out until you can come in and clean, get the necessary things to do. And then you have to divert those voters to the other sites that you have. So, yeah, so the order, all of those things are what we're having to do. Are you going to give away pens or are you going to try to clean those? No, ma'am. <laughs> They are one of the, when I say they, I'm always referring to the state. They, the state is going to refer, refurnish uh, uh, throwaway pens. And uh, so nobody should be using the second pen. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't be leaving them in the booth. They should be, uh, uh, they would make their, their ballot, they should get a pen. They go in and go and they can drop the pen in the trash can or they can take it on with them. Yes, ma'am. That's the game plan in that respect. Ms. Uh, do you have any idea how many organizations are encouraging uh, voter by absentee to maybe give? to store some of some of the dangers that might be uh, posed by in-person voting. So you're saying you're speaking of absentee by mail? That's the only thing they have, yeah. I'm saying that's what you're speaking of. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, I, I, I don't know of uh, a lot of agencies. Uh, VIP was the one that sent out those 80,000 uh, uh, absentee request forms. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, of course, uh, everybody is that we know is promoting that for safety factors if they they want to. But in, in our retrospect, we offer it to anybody they want, it, but they have to request it. I do know some of the places that are doing uh, mail-in voting training. To you know, teach people how to do it, right? So I don't know how many of those are happening. Well, well, uh, as of September the fourth, the state will have a portal online that you can fill that absentee request form out. You can either mail it in, you can either email it in, or you can either fax it in. Up until this year, that, that, none of that was legal because they had to have a hard signature. Mm -hmm. So now you can be able to email it in, but but all the laws are changing because of COVID. So in, in retrospect, so that is something that we are uh, 
that should help. And again, you know, somebody is getting the word out. Because uh, again, we got a, a influxuation of those uh, right now. Um, I, I, I don't know, I forgot what date I saw that was the day, and I think it was 27th of October. October. But, but it, the encouraging point is, and we're hearing that all over the United States, this is not an Edgecombe County problem, is don't wait until the 27th because your, right. your ballot might not get back in time. Right. So the encouraging thing is, is that what people are doing now, keep doing it. Send them in now. And when September 4th comes, when we can start distributing the ballots out, then we'll start distributing out. I won't be able to send 500 out in one day, mm -hmm. but we'll start sending them out as the request came in. Mm -hmm. And we'll start sending them out. We'll start sending them out. And we're going to have a game plan for that. And we're going to have people getting those out. So we'll be okay in that respect, you know. And so the more uh, absentee requests I mail you get, it's safe for those people who be. Yes. The state is going to provide hand sanitizer and masks. Are they going to supply gloves? Yes. Okay. Uh, they also also su supposed to supply us with shields and um, uh, and and a, and a few other things that they supposed to be uh, wipes and things of that nature. You know. Um, so that's where, we're, and then of course, once they give us the direction of what else we need to do, because there's no need to duplicate that, uh, then we'll get thousands additional things that we will uh, get that we will need to have as well. Mm -hmm. um, um, go ahead, sir. Sorry about that. No, go ahead. Um, the machine itself, the ballot itself, after the person touches it and puts it into the machine, any safeguards there between the table where they mark the ballot and the machine in between the machine and us? Well, the workers will I'm, 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 I'm just trying to understand your question first. I don't yeah. know if I understand the question. Okay. <clears throat> the person handles the ballot. Okay. Okay. But now, and then they take it to the, they take it to the machine. The voter. He, you're talking about the voter. The voter. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. The voter. Feeds it through the machine. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm just wondering what the step the, the, the stopgap measures are there as far as as far as uh, transferring whatever mucus or whatever they might have gotten on the ballot itself. Well, the ballot will stay in the machine. Yeah, and then the people who take it out will have gloves on. Exactly. At the end of the day for moon sign. Mm -hmm. Okay. And at the end of the day for election day. Okay. Yes, and that, and we will be having safeguards on the ballot because the only ballots that you would need to possibly would need to touch again is that the one stop ballots. Right. On election day you would not need to touch them again because they're non-retrievable ballots anyway. Mm -hmm. The question was the cover all basis, yeah. Yes, sir. To see what base was uncovered. Mm -hmm. Well, there may be some uncovered. Okay, we need to find them. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, I guess, yeah, they no, they show the world needs to find them. That's why they're having COVID at about 200 or exactly. that many a day. You're absolutely right. And, and of course, they haven't found it yet. Thousand people don't know about it. That's how many go every day. That, that's my point. <laughs> and they, 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 they ain't got to the point they can cover it yet. Because if they I'm could, just, I'm just trying to cover the base. Oh, I agree. I, I totally agree with that. You know, but they're not covering it, even with all the expertise that they know. Mm -hmm. They're not covering it. They wouldn't we have deaths every day. But we're not going to repeat that same mistake. Oh, I don't know what the mistake was. <laughs> okay. The only thing you need to, to do is something the only thing you need to do is try to do everything you can to protect the situation. I'm and I'm with you on that. I'm playing plan B. I got you. I got you. Okay. I got you.
All right, this right here, y'all. I just got a couple of more flyers here, but before I'm done, that flyer right there, y'all got a copy of that? Yeah. It says, and, and it says, um, these are some symptom screening checklists. Of course, uh, this is our poll workers actually doing this. Uh, have you closed, have you had close contact with six feet for at least 15 minutes? We also are, are gonna have uh, a thermometer a gun for our poll workers on uh, one-stop sites. We're not gonna have them in our uh, uh, election day site. We will have thermometers there. And, and there they are to check everybody coming in that's working that day every day for one stop and election day but we are not uh able to check the voters and you're not we can't require them to wear masks you can offer them a mask and ask them to wear a mask we can't meet the requirement in other words if somebody walk in there and say i want to vote and they don't have masks, you can't vote you got to go back out we can't do that okay um, it said, then they talk about uh, last 14 days, somebody been diagnosed with COVID. Uh, since you last worked, have you had any symptoms? There are questions. Since you last worked, have you been diagnosed? If a worker has been diagnosed, has symptoms of, or has been exposed to COVID, they should go home, stay away from other people. And all of us know and hope that that's what everybody would do. I did see something on WRAL today that if somebody had COVID, they're not required to tell you. Did y'all see that? Yeah. Did y'all see it? It was on yeah. WRA. Anybody see it? No, I didn't see it. I saw an, an article where employers are not required to tell anybody else that this person has. Right. They can't. Right. The hemp will write. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. So, how do you do tracing? I need mean, Tracy if somebody had been involved. <laughs> and that's not him out there. I'm not just asking. Y'all know where I'm at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It says if a worker is diagnosed with COVID 19 based on tests of their symptoms, how does or uh, does not get COVID 19 tests but has had symptoms, they can return to work when they can answer yes to all these questions. And all of this is what, in retrospect, so this is what we got. And then uh, another flyer that they sent out was that one right there. Know your W's, wear, weight, and wash. Everybody know that's what they've been talking about for since March. And so we'll keep doing the best we can with that. And this uh, document, I think uh, we need to read through this together. Uh, it's six pages. I think everybody got a copy of that. All right. All right. I'm not going to read through all of it. Uh, we'll read page by page. It's about six or seven of us in here. Anybody want to read the first page? Okay. Everybody got it? Oh, everybody got it? Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. I'll put something. Last updated August 16, 2020. This document will be updated as circumstances require. Requesting a ballot. Do I need an excuse for special, special circumstances to vote by mail? No, any registered voter in North Carolina may vote in the absentee ballot by mail. How do I request my absentee ballot by mail? Fill out an official state absentee ballot request form available for download at ncsbp.gov or pick one up at your county board of elections office. The request from here comes with detailed instructions and is available in Spanish. You may also contact your county board of elections and request that one be mailed to you. By September 1st, an online absentee ballot request portal will be available on the state board of elections website, ncsbe.gov. After completing the request form, you may return it to your county board of elections by fax, email, mail, or in person. When can I request my ballot for the November 3rd, 2020 election? 
absentee ballots may be requested from now until the deadline, 5 p.m. October 27, 2020. The request must be received in the County Board of Elections office by 5 p.m. October 27. If you're mailing your request, please include enough time for your request to be received by the deadline. When will I receive my absentee ballot for the 2020 general election? Beginning September 4th, 2020, ballots will be mailed by County Boards of Elections to voters who have returned a request for Let me stop you right there for one second, please. Okay, now, if I have 500, Y'all know that all 500 will go out the same day. Okay. Yeah. They'll be going out periodically, okay? All right. Go ahead, Smith. Are absentee by mail ballots automatically sent out to all registered voters? No. North Carolina voters must request a ballot using the state absentee ballot request form. What are acceptable ways to include my signature on my absentee ballot request form? A wet ink signature is not required for an absentee ballot request. However, the signature must be unique to the voter and must be readable. Voters may use a pen or their finger stylus or mouse. mouse for the signature if they have the capability. Voters may not use a service such as DocuSign that inserts a type or person font signature that is not made by the voter. Do I need to include a copy of photo ID with my absentee request form slash ballot? No. North Carolina voters are not required to provide or show ID unless further order of the courts. When can I check to be sure you have received and processed my absentee ballot request form for November? Absentee ballots will be mailed to voters beginning September 4th. After September 4th, if you request a ballot and do not receive it within about a week, contact your county board of elections. Can someone request an absentee ballot for me? Yes. Your near relative or legal guardian may request a ballot for you. A near relative is your spouse, brother, sister, parent, grandparent, child, grandchild, mother-in-law, father-in-law, daughter-in-law, son-in-law, step-parent or stepchild. Can I request a ballot for my child who is away at college? Yes. A voter's near relative may request an absentee ballot if the child is a registered voter. The request form must include all required information, including the voter's driver's license number or last four of their social security number. The near relative will sign and provide their address, daytime phone number, and relationship to the voter. Does a faxed absentee ballot request need a cover sheet? No. Can I pick up my ballot in person or does it have to be mailed to me? The ballot must be mailed. Uh, that's important, y'all. Anybody ask me that question? That's mm -hmm. important, okay? So make sure we tell them that it must be mailed, okay? What if a voter is in the ho hospital, nursing home, or other facility needs assistance voting by mail. Any registered voter may request assistance from a multi-partisan assistance team, parentheses MAT. A MAT is a group appointed by a county board of elections to assist voters in facilities with mail-in absentee voting. To schedule a MAT visit, contact your county board of elections. Can a resident of a nursing home or other facility <clears throat> use the facility's fax machine to fax an absentee ballot request to a county board of elections? Yes. The fax machine used to send an absentee ballot request form does not need to be a personal fax machine. In the absence of a mat, can a facility print blank absentee ballot request for residents of the facility. 
or can the facility deliver the blank absentee ballot request to the residents of the facility? Or should they be placed in a common area such as a lobby? <clears throat> the facility may provide forms to the residents or leave them in a common area. Either option is okay. A facility employee may not assist the voter or return a voter's request form. This was dated the 16th. The 16th of the month. This month? This month. And I just realized I, I, I understand. I understand, but that's why I want to see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, this was dated the 16th. And see, that's bad, too. It is. It is. It is. But but the, the one thing that they did, and I'm not to cut you off, the one thing that they did is that they allowed the absentee request forms to be there if they need one. That's, that's new. That is brand new. Mm -hmm. Because they haven't requested it from us. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So okay. this is subject to change. Everything is subject to change. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, thank you. What if I live on a boat or in an RV and want to request an absentee ballot by mail? On the request form, you should provide the address where you want your ballot sent. This may be different from your physical address which is the place to which, when you are absent, you intend to return. The residential address might be, for example, an RV park or boat dock where you typically return and intend to remain indefinitely. It does not have to be an address where you receive mail. If you do not receive mail at your residential address, or if you want your ballot sent to another address, you should provide the mailing address where you receive mail that you want your ballot mailed to. Okay. May I request an absentee ballot if I do not have a permanent residence? You are required to provide your North Carolina residential address, which is a place to which when you are absent, you intend to return. If you are homeless or live in a non-traditional dwelling, you should list the location of Cross Street under the North Carolina residential address section where you typically stay or sleep and intend to return when you are absent. This place does not have to be an address where you receive mail. If you do not receive mail at your residential address, or if you want your ballot sent to another address, you should provide the mailing address where you receive mail that you want your ballot mailed to. Next question. If a voter completes and signs a request form, can the third party assist in scanning the form into a PDF for mailing by the voter? A third party may assist the voter in scanning the form, but may not return the form for the voter. Only the voter or the voter's near relative or legal guardian may return the form. Next question. Are organizations allowed to email request forms to voters? Organizations may email blank state absentee ballot request forms to voters but may not pre-fill any part of the form. Third party groups should be should it should include the instructions with the form. Marking your ballot and witness requirements. Question how many witnesses do I need for my absentee ballot? For the 2020 general election, only one witness is required for an absentee ballot. The voter the voter is required to mark the ballot in the presence of the witness. The witness should not observe so closely that they can see how the voter votes. Instruction will come with the absentee ballot. Next question. Who is not allowed to serve as a witness to an absentee ballot? Individuals prohibited from witnessing an absentee ballot include a person younger than 18, a candidate for election unless the candidate is the voter's near relative, if the voter is a patient or resident at a 
hospital clinic, nursing home, or adult care home. The following individuals are also prohibited from assisting. An owner, manager, director, or employee of that facility. An individual who holds in any elected federal, state, or local office or precinct political party or organization office or a campaign manager or treasurer for any candidate or political party. Question, if you, if I make a mistake on my ballot, may I request a new one? Yes. If you have not returned the ballot, you may contact the county board of elections and request a new ballot. The first ballot should not be returned and will not count. Seems as if they should make the person return a spoiled ballot in order to get the new one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a I live by myself, am very susceptible to the virus, and do not want contact with anyone. How do I get my absentee ballot witness? A voter is required to vote their ballot in the presence of a witness, but the witness may do so while socially distanced. In fact, the law requires that the witness preserve the secrecy of the voter's ballot. A voter may choose to vote their ballot outside or may stand across the room from the witness. A voter could also ask the witness to observe through a window. In addition to wearing a mask and gloves, the voter and witness may wish to use separate pens and use hand sanitizer or wash their hands with soap and water before and after touching the balloting material. If I only want to vote for president, can I leave the rest of the ballot blank and will it still count? Yes. And returning your ballot, how can I return my absentee ballot? Absentee ballots may be returned, one, by mail, two, by commercial courier service, three, in person at your county board of elections office, four, in person at an open early voting site in your county. When is the ballot return deadline for the November 3rd, 2020 election? For civilian absentee voters, the container return envelope with the voter ballot enclosed must be returned to the County Board of Elections no later than 5 p.m. on election day. Absentee ballots received after 5 p.m. on election day will be counted only if they are postmarked on or before election day and received by mail no later than 5 p.m. November 6. Ballots without a postmark must be received by election day. If I've received my ballot by mail, may I still vote in person? Yes, you may still vote in person as long as you did not return your absentee ballot. Your absentee ballot will be spoiled after you vote in person. Can I vote the ballot and return it to the County Board of Elections, but change my mind and cancel my ballot and vote on election day instead? No, once you return your ballot, you may not change or cancel your ballot. Will I be notified if my absentee ballot is rejected? Will I have a chance to remedy any deficiencies? County Boards of Election will contact voters when there are deficiencies with the absentee ballot. You should provide your phone number or email address on the request form in case the county board needs to contact you. The state board encourages voters to carefully read and follow the instructions that come with the ballot. The state board also encourages voters to request and return their absentee ballot as early as possible to ensure time remains to correct any issues. If an issue arises and the voter is unable to successfully cast an absentee ballot, that voter may still vote during the in-person early voting period or on election day. May I return my friends and neighbors absentee ballots? No. 
You may only return someone's ballot if they are a near relative, that is a spouse, brother, sister, parent, grandparent, child, grandchild, mother-in-law, father-in-law, daughter-in-law, son-in-law, step-parent, stepchild, or legal guardian. May another person return my absentee ballot for me. Yes, but only if that person is your spouse, brother, sister, parent, grandparent, child, grandchild, mother-in-law, father-in-law, daughter-in-law, son-in-law, step-parent, step-child, or legal guardian. County boards of elections keep track of who drops off each absentee ballot. May two people return their ballots in the same envelope? No. The return ballot envelope is specific to each voter and must contain that voter's ballot. May I hand deliver my voted absentee ballot to my county board of elections office? Yes, if you are delivering your voted ballot in person, it must be returned to your county board of elections office by 5 p.m. on election day. You may also return it to any early voting site in the county. They can not stop right here in a second. But for y'all, general information, when somebody bring in an absentee ballot 5 p.m. on election day, y'all know it won't get counted election day. Okay, can you continue? Say that again. If somebody bring their ballot in at 5 p.m. on election day, it won't get counted by the close of election day. Oh, it would be counted in an absentee supplement meeting. Okay. Remember, because you know when we come back here right. at 5 o'clock on election day, mm -hmm. you're only going to display what has been went through that machine right. prior to. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Where were we? We hand. May I hand deliver my voted absentee ballot to my county board of elections office? Yes, if you are delivering your voted ballot in person, it must be returned to your county board of elections. Oh, I said about 5 p.m. on election day. You may also return it to any early voting site in the county. May I hand deliver my voted absentee ballot to the polls on election day? No, you may return your ballot to any early voting site in your county during the early voting period, but not to your polling place on election day. One stop early voting ends at 3 p.m. October 31st. I heard that if I vote absentee by mail, my vote may not get counted. Is that true? No, each eligible voter's absentee ballot is counted if it contains all required elements and meets the deadline for return to the county board of elections. If you drop off a sealed absentee ballot at an early voting site, do you have to wait in line? Yes, if you do not want to wait in line, you can mail your ballot. How much does it cost to mail my ballot in? 55 cents, one first class stamp, or one forever stamp? <coughs> somebody else. <laughs> Absentee voting and security. How secure is absentee by mail voting? Numerous safeguards are included in the absentee voting process. Absentee ballots are sent home to registered voters who request them using an official state absentee ballot request form. The request must be signed and include identifying information about the voter, including date of birth and driver's license number, or last four digits of the voter's social security number. Voters must vote their ballot in the presence of a witness, and that witness must sign the absentee return in the certifying that the voter marked their ballot and is the registered voter submitting the marked ballot. Only the voter of the near relative or legal guardian may return the ballot. Upon return, the county board of election reviews the absentee in the to ensure compliance with the legal requirements. Once the ballot is accepted, that voter is marked in the system as having voted in that election. Data on who has requested absentee ballots is now confidential until election day. Criminal penalties have been increased for absentee voting fraud-related offenses. Many people are watching our absentee 
voting process including candidates, political parties, county boards of elections, and political and data scientists. If there are anomalies or questionable activities, they will be reported to election officials. Finally, the State Board of Election has an investigation division that investigates credible allegations of election fraud and refers cases to prosecutors when warranted by the evidence. The State Board also conducts several post-election audits which will catch inconsistencies that can then be investigated by the board or our investigations division. What prevents someone from voting absentee and then voting again in person? If someone is voting an absentee ballot, then shows up to vote in person, the check-in system will alert the poll worker that the person has already voted. Will anyone know who I voted for? No. Ballots remain in the seal absentee envelope until they have been fully approved by the board. During the counting process, the ballot is removed from the envelope, fed into the tabulator. Ballots are secret by law, and others will not know who you voted for. Can I review a list of all voters who have requested an absentee ballot? Absentee by mail data is confidential until election day or until ballots are returned. This data may be viewed once ballots are returned and counted. And just one job. This is how to print. I hadn't read this, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. I think that's it. Now, it does. It comes quite a bit. All right. Again. I read this on Facebook. <laughs> oh, we did? Yeah, one of the things that you put up there. Okay. All right. That's all I have. Unless y'all got something. Okay. Does anyone have anything that you want to discuss? Well, I would like to thank everyone for coming. Oh. Do you want to put in a motion? No, I was looking at it. Yeah, I Accordingly, now this is uh, the 18th day of August, mm -hmm. and accordingly, we should not be back together again until the third uh, Tuesday in September. However, as this progress is changing, mm -hmm. uh, I got 48 hours to notice another meeting, so I may have to notice a meeting based on the information that I'm getting in so that we can come back together. Now, they, they have given us the possibilities of having uh, a virtual meeting. So we may have to be able to do that. And our team will set up the Zoom information just like they have now in case it comes to a virtual meeting. Okay. All right? And if anybody uh, feel uh, distressed about coming to the meeting, you still got to have three persons there to, to vote on. And there are, there are some issues that it's going to take all five board members to vote on. Okay. We vote by, by phone? If we have a virtual meeting, we could vote by phone. All right, that's all I have. <laughs> I entertain a motion for this, this one, or So we move. Okay, you Thank y'all for coming in. If I could be of any help to y'all, y'all give me a call. Um, as much as I, are we open? Okay. 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 Okay.